The Minnesota Wild will try to get back on track tonight against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And while the Wild have struggled over their last handful of games, how has the rest of the Central Division done? What about the Western Conference? We take a look at the Western Conference playoff picture today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Locked on Wild on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we take a step back and look at the playoff picture for both the Central Division and the Western Conference as well, as we see how teams have been doing since the calendar flipped to 2023. We'll take a look at how the Wilds stack up amongst the rest of the playoff field. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and we've got a preview for you coming up later today. Uh, for the game against the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight. And look, we have discussed a lot over the last handful of days the things that this team needs to do in order to get back on track, the things they can't do on any given night uh, if they want to have a chance to come away with wins, especially with the quality of opponents lining up that will be uh, going up against this team come February. And so wanted to just take a look at kind of how the rest of the Central Division and the rest of the Western Conference is doing uh, so far here at this point in the season. Now, we obviously, since the Wild are in the Central Division, will spend more time talking about that. But let's start by looking at the Pacific Division And this, for a while, was really a two-team race. It was the Vegas Golden Knights. They just ran away and hid early on with the uh, division lead. Now, things have started to fall apart for the Golden Knights. Over the last nine games, they're four and five. And uh, that is here in 2023. They um, have been great on for the most part on special teams but just it has been a struggle with them and now losing Mark Stone one of their keystone pieces it's obviously going to be difficult for the Golden Knights moving forward because they happen to be just in front of one of the hottest teams in the entirety of the NHL that being the Seattle Kraken who so far in 2023 are 9-2-1. and one. They're plus 20 in goal differential. They're scoring over four goals a game. They are giving up under two and a half. And so you look at those two teams as kind of the tops of the class. And actually, the Kraken just one point back of the Golden Knights with two games in hand. So Vegas was off and running to start the season. The Kraken have caught up to them. And uh, I think it's at this point, I think it's safe to say that the Seattle Kraken are definitely one of the um, one of the top teams in the Pacific Division and a team that should be able to, uh, to keep things rolling into the playoffs uh, with that mix. Now, having said that, you've got a very tight bundle uh, with the Pacific Division at this point. Edmonton currently has the top wild card spot. They have 57 points, so they're just three back of the Golden Knights. And with Edmonton, 
you've got the combo of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl that is going to keep you in a lot of games. Even when you're goaltending, even when the other supporting pieces um, are not really doing enough to kind of propel them. And this team now, this Oilers team, with Evander Kane back, they have won six in a row, and they have now put themselves firmly in the conversation as well. And your your expectations for Edmonton are always going to be postseason with McDavid and Dreisaitl. And so they are taking care of that first wild card spot and actually both wild card positions currently being held by the Pacific Division. The Calgary Flames at this point, at this point, two points ahead of the Colorado Avalanche for that second wild card spot, but the Flames 5-3 and 2 in their last 10. So not uh not particularly great. Um, for the Flames, and here in 2023, Calgary is five, three, and two. So you've got some separation starting to happen uh, from you know the top contending teams in the Pacific and the teams that just are already out of it. I mean, your San Jose, Anaheim—they've been out of it for a while. It'll be interesting to see what happens to Vancouver now that they have moved on from Bruce Boudreau. If Rick Tockett is able to get a little more out of that roster, I would imagine that they still are not going to have enough to uh, to compete for a playoff spot. They're currently uh, six points out. Crazy that considering everything that has happened, um, I actually, I should say they're 16 points out. Um, of a wild card spot. So I think it's safe to say in the Pacific, it's going to come down to Vegas, Seattle, and the Kings. I feel like those three are pretty firmly entrenched. Call me crazy, but I don't see the Flames being in the playoff picture when all is said and done. I feel like they will be the team that will fall out of it, and the Central Division will probably grab a wild card. So one from each division, but I think Edmonton is pretty solid. Um, Edmonton's pretty solidly in. The Kings are a team that's going to go as far as that offense will get them, but I worry about their goaltending when we get to the postseason. But I think regular season-wise, they have been keeping pace with the Golden Knights and the Kraken, so I will put them in the playoffs as well. And so I think the four that come out of the Pacific – will be the Golden Knights, the Kraken, the Kings, and the Oilers will be uh, the four that will battle it out. And um, it wouldn't surprise me at all with the way that Seattle has played, especially here over their last uh, 12 games. It wouldn't surprise me at all if with now Vegas having to deal with the Mark Stone injury, if the Kraken are able to overtake them and uh, hop into that top spot in the Pacific Division. So. There are a lot of teams that are jumbled up at the top, but I think some of the cream will rise to the top. Um, and, and it'll be those four that end up kind of deciding how things play out in the Pacific. Now, the Central Division, on the other hand, not as jumbled. There are a couple teams at the top, and then there's everybody else chasing them. So we'll take a look at the Central Division and how we expect that will play out as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. We are so excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked on Sports because they are the number one sportsbook in America. I'm, of course, talking about FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today and get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. All you have to do is sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all of your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. If you're looking at the Minnesota Wild game, 
Wilds are currently one and a half goal underdogs to the Tampa Bay Lightning over under for tonight's game set at six. So make sure if you look at those, if you look at any other bets, don't miss out and head to fanduel.com slash locked on today. Make sure to place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Locked On Sports. Continuing today's episode of Locked On Wilds, once again, thank you for making Locked On Wilds your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked On NHL Prospects show to get the full lowdown on all of the biggest names that will be in the 2023 NHL Draft plus a look at organizational rankings for prospects throughout the league. Locked on NHL prospects is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, absolutely free of charge. Continuing to take a look at the playoff picture as it currently stands for the Western conference. We started with the Pacific division laid out the four teams that uh, ultimately will be the ones that make it in to the postseason now let's take a look at the central division central division has had the two top dogs pretty much all year the dallas stars the winnipeg jets the stars with their high flying offense they have it seems like led in pretty much every game they've played this year and uh, they just have a relentless torrid attack led by jason robertson led by all the other stars, pun intended, that Dallas brings with that lineup. They're also getting great goaltending from Jake Ottinger. It is a really good combo and reminds me, at least offensively, a lot of what we saw from the Wild last year. You have your superstar leading the way, but you have a lot of supporting cast that have been contributing in on the goals and just relentless speed they've got power they've got everything you would want for an nhl team and that's why they have been essentially the wire to wire leaders in the central division here this season um it's i don't want to say that they have been scuffling as of late but uh, currently in 2023 they are five four and two so far here in the uh in 2023 scoring under three goals a game though they are giving up just over two so they have been uh, getting some great goaltending performances the goals just have not been um popping up at the same rate that they did at the beginning of the season and uh missing rupe hints at the moment uh certainly when he is able to return um should help that lineup out to say the least but I mean, it's a team that really does not have a lot of weaknesses uh, to this point. And uh, we saw the last time those two teams squared off, the Wild and the Stars. Dallas really had their way offensively with with the Wild. It was hard for the Wild to sustain anything. And um, that's going to be a very tough matchup for the Wild the rest of the season, especially if they continue to be hampered by the things that continue to pop up over the course of the last handful of games. It's it's going to be a tough matchup. Now, you've got Winnipeg that is not as fast. Winnipeg is not as skilled offensively, but Winnipeg just continues to get it done. And uh, they are off to one of the better starts in the NHL. They're 8-3 and three here in 2023, averaging 3.7 goals per game giving up under three. So they're still getting that good goaltending. Their penalty kill is sensational. And Winnipeg just getting a couple of players back from injury as well. So they don't show any signs of slowing down uh, from what they've been able to do. And it's ironic that it's the two teams with two new coaches that are getting it done for the Central Division so far is uh, Rick Bonus um taking the helm of the um uh, of the new Winnipeg Jets almost said New York uh Bonus taking the um the helm 
of the Winnipeg Jets and Peter DeVoer taking the helm of the Dallas Stars. And both teams have been great all season. And so I, I feel comfortable saying that I think those two teams are going to be there at the end of it. Now, do they get first and second in the division? It's hard to say because the team that is currently a point behind the Minnesota Wilds with no games in hand, the Colorado Avalanche, they've won five in a row. They continue to bide their time until uh, Gabriel Landeskog is ready to return. They've gotten just an otherworldly season from Miko Rantanen. They continue to score goals. The goaltending has been good for them. That is a team that I think can ultimately make some noise uh, once they get back to full strength. And so I'm going to say right now that I, from what we've seen, Dallas and Winnipeg haven't gone anywhere. Colorado is lurking. I think the fight for the playoffs for the Minnesota Wild is starting to sink back into wild card territory because just look at those teams. The Wild do not have the offense to match up with Dallas. So if they're going to beat the Stars, they're going to have to get A-plus goaltending, and they're going to have to absolutely clamp down defensively on Dallas's top players in order to come away with wins in those matchups. They match up against Winnipeg just fine. Uh, they've had success against Winnipeg for the last several seasons. So Winnipeg I'm not as worried about. But in order to contend with Dallas and the Avalanche, the Wilds need to get that tip-top defense. Uh, they need to be you know, physical to try to slow those guys down. So it's, it's going to be a tall order, especially with the Avalanche currently on a run. It's going to be a tall order for the Wild to stay ahead of them, especially with the schedule that they have coming up in the month of February, which we briefly alluded to yesterday. There just there is not really any sort of margin for error or any breathing room uh, for the Wild um, with those three teams in the division. So keeping that in mind, and it's not impossible, it's just trying to be realistic as to you know, where this fight is is going to take place. And so now that we've kind of identified that those are probably the three top teams in the Central Division, and you add in the fact that you've got Vegas and you've got Seattle pacing the Pacific with the LA Kings and Edmonton um, as the other two teams fighting for that third spot in their division and also one of the wild card spots. It's going to come down to a handful of teams. And so we will finish today's episode by just taking a look at the teams that are going to be fighting it out for that final wild card spot in the Western Conference playoffs. We'll talk about that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Our next partner uses a product that I use literally every single day of the week. Now, I started taking. AG1 because it really allows you to simplify your vitamin and supplement routine. All it takes is one delicious scoop of AG1 and you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. And it's at lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. 
To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Reminder, we've got a pregame preview coming for you later today with Kevin Gorg taking a look at tonight's matchup against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So we spent the show talking about where we're at with the Western Conference playoff picture at this current moment. We talked about the Pacific Division. We talked about the teams in the Central Division that are probably most likely to uh, settle in as the uh, divisional teams, which leads us to the wild card fight. And that is going to come down to a handful of teams because the Wild, with their 54 points right now, teams that are within striking distance are some very, very familiar foes. We've got the Calgary Flames, who I said would probably fall out of it by the end of the season. They're just, there's a lot of weird energy, weird vibes with that Calgary team. Daryl Sutter kind of starting to rub people the wrong way as their coach. So I just, with the amount of talent that the Flames have, I I don't know if you can truly count them out, but I just don't have a good feeling uh, about what they are doing. And it just, it seems like two steps forward, three steps back, similar to the Wild. And so I, I'm putting them kind of at the at the end of the picture. And then you've got the likes of the Nashville Predators. You've got the likes of the St. Louis Blues. Now, it's interesting here because with those two teams, the Wild have games in hand on them and have more points. The Wild have five more points than the Blues. The Predators have uh, four fewer points than the Wild, but they both have beaten the Wild head-to-head so far this season. Uh, the Wild have split with the Blues. The Predators just predatored the Wild earlier this season when, uh, when they squared off um, in Nashville. So those two teams still present problems for the Minnesota Wild that we saw last year that we have seen again. And so if the Wild are going to be that other wild card team, they need to create some distance between those teams because if it comes down to the final portion of the season and or going up against one of those teams, um, it's just, they're just not good matchups. And especially this season, like it was one thing last year when they had the offense to be able to attack anybody, they don't now. And so if you show up flat, if you commit a bunch of bad penalties, it's often too much to overcome with how some of these other teams are built. You know, that, that game against the St. Louis Blues where they got shut out three to nothing is you, you look at a, a one goal deficit and ordinarily you'd say, okay, fine, not a problem. But there just have been so many stretches this year where the offense just does not show up and all of a sudden you're midway through the third period and you're looking and you're down by a goal and you say, are we going to be able to get it? So it's just, it's going to require a full buy-in from not only the guys that are known on the defensive end of the puck. It's going to require a full buy-in from those guys, but it's also going to require a full buy-in from everybody else because, you know, the Wild, it's no secret what leads to them not playing well is it's just these self-inflicted mistakes that 
lead to opportunities for the other team that just you can't have if you're not able to make it up offensively. So put it on the whiteboard. Bad penalties, turnovers in the zone, just all those things. If they keep doing those, uh, it's it's going to be a rough ride for this team because as I did yesterday, I'll do it again today. I just am trying to get everybody ready for what is coming up because your February schedule, yes, it does start with Arizona on the road, but then your February opponents are at Dallas. You host Vegas, New Jersey, Florida, Colorado, Dallas, Nashville, the Los Angeles Kings, then you're at Columbus, at Toronto, home against Columbus, and then home against the New York Islanders to finish off the month. 13 games, and nine of them are against teams that are either in the playoffs or are going to be in the conversation. And several of them are against some of the best teams in the league. So it's it's all the season is going to come down to the month of February. If it goes well, the Wilds will have a chance. They'll be in that conversation. They may be able to push themselves higher up the ladder, but they've got no margin for error as it is right now. Zero margin for error as it is right now. And just a gauntlet of a schedule coming up in February. So it's it's really on them how this plays out, how this finishes. Um, if it looks like it has the last few games, well, then you're looking at maybe a four and nine month or worse. But if they're able to overcome some of that, stack together some quality wins, then you start to uh, you start to move yourself ahead of some of those other teams that are all going to be fighting through to try to make the postseason once it's all said and done. So it all starts tonight, getting back on track against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and uh, we'll see if the Wild are able to do that here this evening. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked On Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done. Make sure you check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the NHL. Locked On NHL is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, absolutely free of charge, just like Locked On Wild. You can find us on your favorite podcast platforms, so make sure to subscribe on YouTube, anywhere you listen to podcasts, as well as on social media, too. We are everywhere trying to keep you as up-to-date on the Minnesota Wild as we possibly can with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.